Hello, nutrition enthusiasts. My name is Patrick. And my name is Brooks. And today we're going to talk about vitamin D. Now, we know what you're thinking, and yes, vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin. But no, we aren't going to be talking about how to get tan. You may or may not know, but vitamin D has a very important effect on muscle performance. Vitamin D is a steroid hormone that regulates certain tissue processes through specific cell receptors. The process in which vitamin D enters the body can be broken down into a few steps. First and foremost, ultraviolet light needs to hit your skin. This UV light converts 70 hydrocholesterol already found in the skin to vitamin D3. The highest amount of 70 hydrocholesterol is found in the stratum basale and stratum spinosum of the epidermis. In the intestine, dietary vitamin D2, also known as ergocalciferol, is absorbed with dietary fat. This form of vitamin D is largely human-made and added to foods. Both dietary sources of vitamin D and vitamin D synthesis in the skin bind to a carrier protein called the vitamin D binding protein. In the blood, as it is lipophilic, it needs the carrier protein. When vitamin D is in its active form, it will be retransported through the blood with the same carrier protein. These proteins are then transported to the liver. The liver converts vitamin D to 25-hydroxylase vitamin D3. Vitamin D is then converted in the kidney to 125-dihydroxylase vitamin D3, otherwise known as calcitriol, which is the active form of vitamin D. We know you are all very smart individuals, so we're going to kick this lesson up a notch. Here's the, the vitamin D cycle we just talked about, but in more detail. This cycle includes the function of our good friend, calcium. When there are low levels of calcium in the blood, synthesis of vitamin D is increased, which helps absorb more calcium and in turn increases blood calcium levels. The interaction between vitamin D and calcium is very important for the muscle since it binds to actin and myosin in order to contract the muscle. Contrary to popular belief, vitamin D does more than help with bone health. It is actually a very important influencer in the intestines and muscles as well. Primarily, vitamin D does a lot of work with calcium by adding a ple pleiotropic hormone, meaning it influences calcium metabolism in the body. Calcium does a lot for the body beyond building strong bones. Vitamin D promotes the glorious work of calcium in the intestines by producing calbidin, a calcium-binding protein in the intestine, promoting calcium and phosphorus absorption in the intestine, and regulating gene transcription and cell proliferation in the parathyroid gland. Within bones, vitamin D plays a role in synthesizing type 1 collagen while also stimulating synthesis of osteocalcin and promoting differentiation of osteoclasts. Vitamin D actually has the most work done in the muscles. It increases amino acid uptake, alters phospholipid metabolism, increases troponin C, and has some non-genomic effects on the muscles. So how does this affect the athletes of America and beyond? Well, it's easy to tell that athletes who train indoors more often than outdoors are going to have less sun exposure and thus less vitamin D to work with. However, it's also seen in the literature that the time of year one trains can also have an impact on how much vitamin D you get, which will impact your performance. Hedinger and Mueller studied the impact of seasonality on, on physical fitness and found that, when controlled for time, athletes experienced variability in how easily they could train their muscles. This is because a type of vitamin D uh, 25 OHD levels are highest in the late summer, sharply declines in autumn, and is lowest in the late winter. We talked to a Wake Forest trainer to hear her experience with vitamin D deficient athletes. Fatigue was her biggest symptom, muscle weakness was the second one. Um, ultimately she was, on, um, was put on a prescription dose of vitamin D in order to reverse the effects. She was an indoor athlete, so that kind of was reflective why she was having issues. We technically don't need vitamin D in our diet because we can make it in our body if we get enough sun exposure, but not everyone gets enough. There are many factors that can predispose anyone to vitamin D deficiency, such as dark skin, inadequate sun exposure, insufficient surface area of skin exposed to sun, northern latitudes, consistent use of sunscreens, and low dietary intake. As you can see, the sun is a very important component. There actually exists a skin tone gradient within the human species that was determined evolutionarily by geographic location based on a theory called folate hypothesis. If you live in the northern latitudes, you are closer to the poles, meaning you don't receive as much sun exposure annually compared to someone who lives in the tropics. Therefore, vitamin D deficiency is more common.
So, nutrition enthusiasts, would you like to hear about more vitamin D studies? Wow, they sound super excited. They do indeed. All right, to start us off, I read this study that examined the vitamin D status of healthy male and female athletes to see how the vitamin affected their training and overall health. Oh, really? That sounds pretty interesting. What were their results? Well, it seems like they found that the low vitamin D status, there was a greater risk for the common cold, influenza, um, illness-inducing URI, and gastroenteritis. Wow. Um, so, out of all these people that they studied, all these athletes, um, who were they, or who did they study, and where was it? Well, their study focused on the athletes from the University of Wyoming. Okay. And they seem to note that the most surprising finding was that there was only a small percentage of the athletes were vitamin D deficient. That's really surprising. I feel like you would mostly think that um, there would be a lot of athletes who were vitamin D deficient. Yeah, I would think that as well. Uh, and so did others. The data contrasted with other studies that reported that at least 37% of all athletes are vitamin D deficient. Though the researchers hypothesized that their, um, their results were so surprising because of the weather in Wyoming, where right. being it was generally sunny and had a mild climate for summer, spring, and fall. Huh. Amazing. What a little sunshine can do for the body. Indeed, indeed. So what was the study that you found? Well, I also read a study that focused on vitamin D, um, but this one was with supplementation on elite dancers who mostly spent their time indoors um, during the winter. Oh yeah? And did you find anything interesting? Um, the, res the researchers actually found that there was a significant increase in isometric um, quadriceps strength and an increase in muscle power. So the researchers could link those to um, activation of different muscle fibers. Oh wow, that is a significant finding. And how are the different muscle fibers affected exactly? Um, so, both isometric muscle strength and vertical strength were measured, um, but it was found that vitamin D supplementation didn't have as big of an effect on um, vertical jump, so they were able to conclude that vitamin D may have more specific role in type 1 fibers rather than type 2. Wow. Did they happen to find anything on, I don't know, injury prevention? Funny you ask, because they did. Um, because dance is so hard on the body, causing many injuries and musculoskeletal problems like on the lower back, the pelvis, the knees, etc., they wanted to see how vitamin D could help reduce those injuries. Um, and it turns out that vitamin D did reduce the injuries. Um, so vitamin D's ability to reduce the risk for injury was linked to improving the muscle function and strength um, of the muscles themselves. That is very amazing. Who would have thought that vitamin D would be such an important part of a person's nutrition? Well, I hope that satisfied your thirst for vitamin D. Now here's a message from our sponsors. Oh, hey Brooks. How's your winter been? Um, it's been okay. I've been pretty fatigued recently. I'm not really sure why. I haven't been able to run as far or lift as much as I have in the past, and I don't know why. Wow, oh, no. that sounds like you need a healthy dose of vitamin D. Good vitamin D can help with those muscle performance issues. Oh, okay. That sounds awesome. Um, how much do you recommend to take? I think it's recommended to take 25 to 100 micrograms or 1,000 to 4,000 IUs. Oh, awesome. I guess I'll be taking a lot of that sunshine vitamin in the future. Whoa there, let's not go overboard on the supplements. Too much vitamin D can be toxic to the body. Kidney stones you know, poor infant development, death, these are all things that can happen with too much vitamin D. But that's only from supplements though. Oh my gosh, well is there anything else that I can take that isn't a supplement? Well, you can always get some dietary um, vitamin D from your food. Um, eating f like fish like salmon and eel are pretty good sources of vitamin D, but if you really want to be adventurous you could have some good old cod liver oil. Um, I think I'm gonna stick to the whole fish on that one. Sounds good. <laughs> Hey Brooks, how is your summer going? Oh hey Patrick, um, it's going really well actually. I took your advice and your recommendation with the vitamin D and I feel stronger than ever now. Great, I'm glad to hear your training is going well. 
If you think your vitamin D deficiency is affecting your training, contact your local nutritionist today.